Hello, my name's James. I'm a portrait photographer from Portsmouth in the UK. You've probably not heard of me. Look, I'm DNR for life, for life, DNR. Love it. Uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to look at, um, I've had a request uh, from people on the YouTube channel to do more, uh, a more thorough uh, Photoshop sort of run through of sort of things that I look for in Photoshop. And Photoshop's a tool in photography. Um, it's not the answer to, to, to problems. I always like to think of it as a tool that I use to enhance uh, photos that are already good. Um, Photoshop is something, it kind of like can save a poor photo, but it can't make a poor photo great. It can make a good photo great, which is, which is a really cool thing to do. And it's just the same as everything that we used to do back in the day in the darkroom, except with more possibilities. And the possibilities that we have uh, with Photoshop are really, really cool. So I'm just gonna show you some of the tools that I use sort of day to day. Um, I think the most important thing before we go forward about using Photoshop in wrestling photography, this is what can really set you apart in any sort of photography, um, is using it to accentuate the positives of an image and take away things that you don't like and distracting elements. And it's so important to, when I, when I think about sort of like my social media presence and when I think about the photos that I upload, I think it's really important to remember that less is more. Um, uploading a gallery of 400 images from a show, no one is going to go through 400 images uh, and, and look at them and try and work out which ones they like and, and leave comments for everything. There just isn't enough time in a day. You should spend that time, in my mind, picking the images that you really, really like and working really, really hard on them to, to, to make them have the maximum amount of impact when, when you put them uh, online and get you the maximum amount of attention and get the, the artists who are featured in the pictures the maximum amount of attention as well. Um, so we're gonna start off here. This is an old image from uh, Progress Resting at Wembley um, where we have taken, uh, I believe it's Nina Samuels on the left here, uh, the champion Ginny in the middle, Chikara there third along and Charlie Morgan, who's the fourth one there in this picture. And I'm up on the rampway, 5,000 people in the background um, and lights going off everywhere and a championship belt that's just being raised by this bit of lens flare, which is overexposed in the middle of the image. Um, what I'm, it draws attention to the champion, even though she's at the front and even though she's being obscured by other people within the image. There's a nice positioning there. There's really nice deep shadows. There's lights going off all over the place. But it's a little bit of a cluttered image. That's, that's what I would say about this from, from my mind. It's quite powerful in terms of the silhouetting and the long shadows and the dramatic lighting. But ultimately, uh, where's your eye really being drawn to? And what we're going to do now is we're going to to, I'm going to break down for you how I'm looking at this image and how I would seek to, to, to improve it by just a few real simple Photoshop techniques. So we're just going to start off firstly, we're going to grab our crop tool here and um, this scaffolding at the top, um, the rigging for all of the lighting up here, it's very, very bright in this corner here. You've got sort of nice lines here, but ultimately the whole thing isn't really on on a straight, it's not on a parallel. And I kind of like working with parallel lines within photography. I kind of like working with symmetry. And when we bring a, when we bring a guideline down here, you can see there how the rigging sort of slopes off towards the end. Um, so it's not, quite, it's not quite symmetrical and it's not quite level and it's just a little bit distracting. Now we could sort of prop it just by um, tilting, tilting the crop there and just like bringing it all into line. But if we did that, I'll just show you how we would do that. It means that those girls now are on an angle, on more of an angle than they were before. You see that? They're on a sort of like an angle there and they're kind of like on a flat. And I kind of like them on a flat. I kind of like them on the straight and narrow because they are the focus of this image. So the only real option I've got here is just to crop, is to crop this bit of scaffolding out that I don't like. I don't like these blotches. I don't like these hotspots. I don't like the fact that it's gone into like a really weird blue up here. Um, I don't like the fact that it's just distracting my eye away from this subject here. The, remember, the subject that I want to draw the eye and the attention to is the silhouettes of the four people in the foreground and the leading lines from their shadows going in to those silhouettes. So we're just going to grab our crop, crop tool and just crop that out now, just like this, which gives us a much longer image, if that makes sense. So just below that line there, and there we go. Now that's been cropped out and it's now not distracting us. We've now got our eyes drawn more into the, more into the, uh, more into the, the detail and the subject matter of the image there. Just going into the right-hand side here, 
on this side of the image here. If we just go in a little bit closer, you can see these little fire exit signs, which are super, super useful and super amazing and really cool. Uh, in the event of emergency, they will save lives, but for the purpose of photography, we're just gonna lose those. So I'm just gonna grab my um, spot healing brush tool. Uh, it's a real simple one and it should just, by, by giving, I always give it a little bit of a feathered edge if I can. Um, just, just bringing that in there, but just cropping and just placing my healing brush just over that there with a soft edge should, there we go, should just give us a nice clean uh, sort of uh, removal of that spot. So that's now gone. The other one up here we can just get rid of again just with the spot healing brush. That's gone. This guy is a, looks like a security guard with a, something in here is just, it's either a reflection off of someone's head or something like that. Again, just a little bit distracting. That can go. These little spots here can go. Someone's bought a tablet there. You see that? Someone's literally photographing that with a tablet. There you go, I think. And then just a few extra fans here. If the fans aren't all lit up, then you kind of want all of the fans to balance out into the background there. And these little hot spots are just a little bit distracting. So although this guy here has got really good eye contact with me, he's checking out what I'm doing there. Look at him. Wow, <laughs> we're just gonna lose him here. Again, just with the spot healing brush, just dragging it around there until we just get rid of him nice and evenly there. Perfect. So if we just, we can go back a few stages and just sort of so you can see the difference there. Those are the little high spots there. They've now just been removed on that side there. Coming over onto this side, just seeing any sort of distracting elements on this side. There's sort of like a, a almost looks like in a, a star alignment there of different stars. So we're just gonna get rid of those again, just with the spot healing brush, those four can just go. That one shouldn't affect that beam of light. I wanna keep those straight edge beams of light. And then we just wanna get rid of all of this in here. Again, just using the spot healing brush, that just gets rid of that there. Perfect. There's a little element here just by Nina's arm there. Can you see that? This little element here by Nina's arm, that's gonna have to go as well. So in this instance, because it's longer and because it goes into this area of the light here, I've got my patch tool here. So I'm just gonna circle this with a patch. And again, my patch is on a very, very light feather. I'm gonna try and not go into Nina's arm because otherwise we'll get a different result and we're just going to drag the patch there to the area that we want to mimic and it should give us a clean mimic there let's get rid of that little person's face so the patch tool again it's, it's another way of doing a similar thing um, to the spot removal tool each of these there's you'll find with photoshop but photoshop is ultimately there's it's the metaphor of there's a 99 different ways to skin a cat or whatever that metaphor is but there's there's loads of different ways to do things in photoshop um, it's just whichever ones you grow up and feel comfortable with when you start using them really. On Junie's dress down here, we can see a little bit of lens flare. It's slightly out of place. I don't like it, it's distracting. So I'm gonna get rid of that as well. There we go. Bye bye, lens flare. I'm just gonna get rid of that little dot there. Cool, perfect. I quite like the little lens flare on Nina's shoulder here, which is fine just coming over the edge that's great there's a tiny little spot here which i might just nip in the bud there so again just using the patch, patch tool just grab it pull it down and that's that now gone that's quite nice there where Ginny's holding up the title belt I'm just going to grab my uh, uh burn tool set it to mid tones in this instance because this is all sort of mid tones mid grays in here i'm just gonna give that a very light brush over there we go and that's what I want I want that belt to really draw attention which is why I've just darkened it now against everything else because that's that's our point of reference there these crowd up here in a little bit of highlight not a big fan of that that's just starting to distract now because we're bringing down the tone of everything else and you'll see where we've overexposed here so we're just going to ring around that crowd there everyone up to about there Bring it down to about here. Get tidy up around the edges. Any bits that you missed. There we go. And then these guys here with the empty seats. We don't want arenas looking empty. Promoters don't want arenas looking empty. They want arenas looking full and full of people enjoying themselves. So we're just gonna bring that in there. There we go. So although there's repetition on that side now, because they're small and they're so far away, it's kind of um, it's kind of not noticeable, which is fine. Cool. Okay, these two spots up here now are starting to draw my eye a little bit. So 
So I'm just going to get rid of those. But we're going to keep the beams from the light from where they're coming from, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to patch again, drag it down to that little ray, and there we go. And now I can just use my clone tool, pick it up from there, go up here, and just drag it up to the top of the frame. There we go. So we can't, so we we can't see where that light's coming from. So it gives the illusion that it's coming from slightly above. I'm going to do the same on this side here. First of all, I'm going to use a spot healing tool this time and take it over and just get rid of the whole ray there. I'm just going to get rid of that little bit there as well. Cool. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, that's now cool. That's fine. This little edge here where I didn't quite get this ray of light on the, it's, it's just cropped out on the original image just there. And we've got a bit of overexposure there. I don't like that half array. I don't think it's really sort of leading anything nicely in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to crop in just slightly on that side of the image there. Just to there, just to get rid of that. Lovely. Now this ray here is quite prominent and quite nice and it's lovely on that corner. For the sake of symmetry, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the rectangular marquee tool. Just grab that area there and I'm just going to check control C, control V gives me another layer and that layer is just that marqueed area there. Drag it over to the other corner, control T, right click on the grid, flip horizontal. And now I've got that ray on the other side but obviously it looks rubbish because it's very, very dark on this side, very, very light on this side. So we're going to go over here, find that area. Remember, we're working on the top layer here. I'm going to grab my eraser tool, reduce the opacity and give myself a nice uh, light feather on the edge of the brush so that when I start to remove it, it goes away very gently and very slightly. So we start to see what's underneath. There we are. Cool. That's blended that in now to the other side. There we go. And now that framing has got real symmetry going on there with the with the um, with the rays on either side. These little modifications, just making little changes, um, just to draw your attention to different parts of the image. Now, uh, where I've cropped in here, <laughs> this light is now in highlight. Um, so uh, this, the light reflecting off of one of the lights here. So I'm just going to go around there and drag that into, um, I'm going to drag that into just an area of randomness. Going to do that with this area here, drag that into an area of randomness as well. Just random sort of blacks in there. That's got rid of that section. Brilliant. Now around Nina's heel here is a, a, is a red, couple of red lines there. These are markers um, for the crew and for the talent to show them where to go really super distracting there so i'm just going to lose that as well we're going to use the clone tool this time for this one so i'm going to select the area just below it and then i'm just going to run the clone tool over the area there and then when i get to the leg i'm going to be super super careful i'm just going to clone a piece of the leg go up and that should clone almost perfectly that's great i'm going to do the same on this side so that's that couple of little red lines gone there, just from the edge. Uh, now we want to try and get rid of these sort of green lines because essentially it's quite a monochromatic image here. And what I mean by that is, is that there's just a lot of blue tones in there. Um, these little lines just by the legs here and on this side here, this one's split. I think I'll keep this one here because it's not too distracting just going through there. I'll have a look at it. But that one there is certainly, certainly distracting. So we'll get rid of that one first. And again, that's fairly simple. We'll just grab a bit of the leg there, lovely. And just work our clone tool all the way along there. And then it's all a little bit messy in there, so we'll just grab our patch tool, go around it, go around all the offending elements that we don't like, drag it into an area there, and that bleeds in nicely, which is perfect. We definitely want to get rid of this little bit here because that's just super distracting. And then I know that this area here is fairly similar colour and texture to this. It's going to be much easier to work with because I've got more to work with until I start going into leg. And that will just get rid of that there nicely. We'll bring a nice clean line of leg in here. I'm sorry about this, Nina. There we go. 
And then you've got this whole section here, which can pretty much be cloned. Now, what we can do here, just around the leg, I'm gonna be careful first. There we go. Now, what I can do is I can left click here, hold down my shift key, and just left click at the end. And we should, with any luck, have a nice straight line. Now that floor is clean. Just looking at the hands there, as we go into a little bit of detail here, see that little, that's a highlight from the ring coming in. It's just annoying me a little bit. So I'm just gonna get rid of that as well. Again, clone tool, grab Ginny's dress and just very gently just go around there. Grab a little bit of extra arm there, grab it down. So that's now gone. This one looks a little tricky. I'm just gonna grab Nina's leg there up to there and then we can clone just from above there and just get that tidied up just around there that's nice lovely so that's now gone beautiful Chikara's a little bit light here and so's Charlie so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my uh, burn tool again just on mid-tones and just burn around Chikara's silhouette and burn around Charlie's silhouette as well, just to make them stand out a little bit. And then we're gonna start working on these, on the actual shadows again. Working firstly in mid-tones, just to bring the whole area down here into a bit more darkness. And then I'm gonna switch this up to the shadows range. So now my burn tool is only looking at areas that are darker than mid. And it's only picking up on those shadows as I work it through. Uh, the champion, at the time, it's Ginny, and she's a little bit lighter there, which is really cool. I'm now gonna get my dodge tool, switch it to just highlights. I only want it to pick up the highlights. I'm just gonna run it over all of the lights around the guys, all of these highlights, all of these beams. And now I'm just gonna get lightened up here and around there. There we go, those ones are really cool. Love it. Beautiful. Back to, the blur, uh, back to the burn tool, I'm just gonna get it back onto mid-tones. If you ever make a mistake, just Control alt z will bring you back in. I'm just gonna run it as mid-tones over the crowd, just to darken them down just a little bit. That's cool. That's nice. There we go. Control l brings up my levels. I'm gonna hold down my Alt key, and I'm gonna bring that level slider in. By holding down the Alt key, I'm on a PC, sorry. Sorry, Mac users, it's another key for Mac. Um, just gonna bring this in here. And anything that's going into black there, I know I've lost all the detail for, which is fine, because I'm going for a silhouetted shot. And then we bring the other end in here. And anything that starts being visible there, we know has gone out of range for whites, and I wanna bring it just to the edge, just so that everything's got that little bit more punch. I can then work with filtered software and things like that that I've got to sort of give myself a natural vignette around the edge. But ultimately what we've done here is we've tried to create an image um, that is just a little bit tidier, a little bit neater, and has a little bit more uh, impact there um, for, for, for the workers. And I think it's worthwhile after working on your show, if you have to get, you know, you, you have to fulfill your contractual obligations, you have to get your images to your promoters, which is great. But I think for yourself and for your social media and for your own promotion, you need to spend a bit more time. You need to look at your images and look at what are the distracting elements, what's the story I'm trying to tell. The story you're trying to tell here is that these are a group of sort of four women. Um, there's a clear leader amongst those, there's a clear champion. They're in a big arena, it's a big time thing, and they're on their way to do something quite dramatic and imposing. And if I can help that just by bringing out some of the highlights, bringing out some of the darker tones, um, and just really tidying that image up and drawing attention, that's storytelling and that's what you know adds value to a promotion and certainly adds value to your work. If you've enjoyed this video, then you can subscribe, you can follow me on the Instagram at the Twitter at Y2JimBob. Um, it's Portrait of a Wrestler everywhere else and you can support We The Independent if you like independent wrestling and doing things right and nicely and looking after the welfare of people. Then you can look at uh, check us out on We The Independent. I'd appreciate a follow there too where we have a weekly podcast with a different wrestling guest and David Starr and Sugar Dunkerton uh, on alternate weeks. Thanks very much. All the best.